Nearly two decades in the sports broadcast game and what a ride it's been. Interviews with the 42nd president, Bill Clinton, to Lakers legends Kobe Bryant and the NBA's all-time leading scorer, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, to name a few. I've been blessed to cover and tell some amazing stories, but there were so many more I didn't get to tell. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Untold Truths with Telly. My guest today is Dusty Baker Jr. Your 19 year playing career ended in 1986. As you mentioned before, you went off to be, a, you know, try to be a stockbroker, but it was 1988 that you became the first base coach for the Giants. Then mm -hmm. in 1993, you're named the manager of the Giants and you go right. on to win 100 games in your first season. You win manager of the year. Did managing come natural to you? Well, I don't know if it came natural or not, but I, I like I said, I was the oldest of five. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're managing in the family when your parents are gone. Uh -huh. I was the guide on. I was uh, in charge of my platoon in, in, in the Marines in boot camp. I was mm -hmm. the captain of almost every team that I was on. I, I didn't ask for these things. You know, I, I was a lot of times chosen, you know, to be in that situation. And I remember uh, when I first accepted the job, I was a first base coach for one year. Then I was a uh, batting coach for four years. Uh, uh, Mr. Al Rosen, who I, uh, you know, neglected to, you know, to offer as one of my mentors, he told me, he said, Dusty, he says, uh, you know, what job do you want as, as uh, in our organization? And I says, I think I'd be a fine uh, assistant GM to you. Uh, because I knew uh, GMs had 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 the power of hiring and firing. Mm -hmm. And so I thought I could help out uh, more, uh, you know, surrounding myself with, you know, you know, with guys that I trusted and guys that I believed to be a good cabinet. And so he mm -hmm. told me, he goes, hey, man, I think you'd be a, a you're more suited for the field. And I kind of jumped back. I kind of took exception to that. I said, well, what the heck you mean that's better suited for the field? I just got out of the field. You know what I'm saying? So, so he looked at me. And he goes, no, no, no. I don't mean it like that. He goes, I think you'd be a fine field manager someday. And so he told me it would take five years to get the player out of me. And it was almost five years to the day when the Giants were, were supposed to move and go to Toronto or Tampa Bay or someplace. And, uh, and, uh, uh, Al convinced me to go to the fall league. That was my first coaching. I mean, my first managerial job. Mm -hmm. And so, and so he told me that uh, I was going to be the manager of the giants even before I, I, I got the job. And I uh -huh. tell guys, you don't know who likes you. I didn't think he liked me at all. To tell you the uh -huh. truth. And so um, uh, he told me, he says, look, Bob Quinn's going to come down and interview you. He says, uh, he says, the job's yours, just don't screw it up. And he says wow. that don't try to <laughs> impress him on how smart you are. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And he just told me to be yourself. And uh -huh. then, like I said, almost five years to the day when he um, hired me and told me that I was going to be a fine field manager someday, almost five years and one day, I think, uh, I was named the manager of the Giants. But uh, when wow. I was named the manager of the Giants, that's when we got Barry Bonds, Bobby Bonds, my childhood, uh, 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 you know, hero and mentor because my dad was his little league coach. Uh, wow. And, and, and so, like, I followed Bobby around everywhere. So it was almost like, you know, you know the family getting back, you know, getting back together. Wow. But uh, it was actually an um, uh, easy transition for me because – I was a batting coach, and, mm -hmm. I've, uh, and I've used this example 100 times, where as a batting coach or as a coach, period, you're kind of like an uncle to the players. Mm -hmm. And as the, as the manager, you're like the father. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if you've got a cool uncle that you can t talk to about anything. Yeah. And you, he may not like it, what you tell him, but you know he ain't going to run tell it. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, but you can't talk to your daddy about anything. You know what I mean? And this is what it's like being the manager versus, uh, you know, you know, being a coach. And I urge my, my coaches to get close to the players because they got to have somebody that, that, you know, they can relate to, somebody that they can talk to. That's why I always had a diversified staff. You know, mm -hmm. I had white dudes. I had Latin dudes. I had older dudes. I had young dudes. I had black dudes. So, so – if you can't talk to one of the guys on my team because 
you know, baseball is a microcosm of, of life and the same problems that you have uh, in baseball are the same problems that you have in life. And so mm -hmm. you got to have somebody that you can relate to and somebody that you, uh, uh, you know, have confidence that you could talk to. You're one of four African-American managers to manage in a World Series. And now you're one of only two African-American managers in all of major leagues. Why do you think minorities have been so underrepresented in the majors when it comes to managerial positions? Well, you know, I think probably a lot of the masses or the powers that be, you know, uh, uh, you know, don't, I got this job because of Al Campana saying that we weren't qualified for these, for these kind of jobs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and at the time when Al Campana said that 20 odd years ago, uh, uh, you know, I was at the right place at the right time. Uh, it was myself, Don Baylor, uh, Cito Gaston, uh, uh, Hal McRae, that were there at the right place at the, at, you know, at the right time. Um, um, managing didn't what I wanted to do. Coaching didn't what I wanted to do. But again, I was kind of um, um, chosen to be in this situation as much as, uh, uh, much as uh, this is how my life has been. And so mm -hmm. I went up to Lake Arrowhead to pray about, hey, man, I was a stockbroker in 87. And then we had the strike of 87. And then I was, I mean, not the strike, we had the, uh, the uh, stock market crash in 87. I'm like, man, this ain't, this ain't for me. And so I was getting divorced. I wanted to come back to Northern California. So I asked my dad, I said, what do I do? He says, hey, he goes, hey, boy, go to the mountains and, 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 and pray on it and ask the Lord to give you direction. And so uh, as my brother and I, his two daughters and my daughter, they were quite young, eight, nine years old. And so I went to Lake Arrowhead and I'm checking in the hotel. And before I even checked in, I was standing in line. Somebody taps me on the shoulder and I turn around. It was the owner of the, of the, of the, of the Giants, Bob Lurie. And he goes, wow. Dusty, you need to come join us. And I was like, dang, man, what you doing here? He goes, first time I've been here. <laughs> And I said, it's the first time I've been here, too. And I, if I had come two minutes earlier or, or two minutes later, because I never saw him again that rest of that weekend. And then mm -hmm. I went right to the phone, called my dad. I said, Dad, what do you think? And he says, uh, he says son, um, you know, you went up there to ask for a sign. And before you even checked in, the sign's tapping you on the shoulder. And he says, I don't <laughs> think you really want to see the sign, do you? And I said, no, <laughs> not really. That ain't the sign. That's not how I planned it. But, uh -huh. uh, uh, you know, you know, there are a lot of African American uh, 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 former players, uh, you know, that that are qualified to do, you know, what I've done for the last twenty years. You just got to get an opportunity. You got to have a, you know, somebody that you know believes in you. I mean, you got Gary Jones, you got Hensley, Bam Bam Mullins, you got, um, uh, you know, you got Pat Listash, uh, uh, you have Delano DeShields. I mean, there are a lot of guys, uh, and I've left out some. There are a lot of guys out there that have. You know that have paid their dues and 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 really deserve opportunity. I think part of the, uh, uh, the reason is because uh, a lot of the African Americans have been substituted by you know my you know my Latin American brothers, which I you know who I'm close to because mm -hmm. uh, uh, the game is 44 percent uh, Latin American, and so you mm -hmm. can have a person of color that's Latin American to communicate with a lot of the Latin guys. Uh, which, which uh, I think has really helped me. My mom made me take three years of Spanish before I even got out of high school. And mm -hmm. so, you know, nobody's ever talked about the fact that, you know, like, you know, I'm bilingual, you know, my whole yeah. family is. And so mm -hmm. uh, today you got to be bilingual. You have to be good with the, uh, with the press and the media. You have to know, uh, you know, how to pick your battles, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, you got to be strong in your, in your, in yourself. Uh, and, and us as African-Americans, we have to know how to get along with, 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 with people of all nationalities versus people who have really made a, a serious effort to get to know us as a whole or get to know how to, uh, uh, you know, get along with us. We've had to get along with everybody else. And mm -hmm. so, uh you know, like my mom told me as a kid, you got to be twice as good to to accomplish the same thing. And uh, uh, she told me this from a very, very, very young age. And uh, I found that to be so. So hopefully 
you know, I would have thought that I could have possibly made it easier on other, other, uh, you know, African Americans to, you know, to get a job or at least get an interview. And mm-hmm. so, uh, you know, I'm not losing hope and I'm not losing faith. And I think this is maybe one reason why, um, you know, I was called, I was called back. I mean, very rarely do we get an easy assignment. Very rarely do we get a, a team that's, that's, a, that's a first division team. Most of the time it's going to be a team that's a, a, other than what I, Washington and now, uh, uh, you know, now that I'm in Houston, you know, I mean, they were basically second division, bottom dwelling type teams that, you know, that, you know, that we're going to get. Mm-hmm. Now, you mentioned being bilingual. A lot of people don't know that, but everyone knows that you are regarded as a player's manager. Everyone loves playing for Dusty. Do you feel like you are so relatable to all your players? And like you mentioned, being able to speak fluent Spanish allows you Mm -hmm. to relate to those Latin American players. Well, definitely. And uh, like I said, it wasn't by choice. It's something that my mom you know, made me do, you know, everybody talks about being a player's manager. I've always wondered, you know, what's the opposite of a player's manager. I've never heard, <laughs> I've never heard what that is. You know, would that be a management <laughs> manager? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And so, uh, um, you know, me relating to the players, you know, I was one of them and I haven't forgotten how hard this game is to play and how game, how easy these guys make the game look. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, you know, they talk about, uh, are you, you know, players manager. I think the fact that, um, um, you know, I, I relate to them via my background. I've been in circumstances where, where, uh, like in my last two years in high school, you know, mm-hmm. there was two black uh, kids in the school, me and my brother. There was one mm-hmm. black kid in, in, in the elementary that was my sister. There were two black kids in the, in the elementary <laughs> that fed the junior high that was my brother and sister. <laughs> and so then I went from there to the South, with uh, was almost totally segregated in the in in the late '60s, and mm-hmm. uh, 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 then I went from there, um, you know, to you know to winter ball. And I played winter mm-hmm. ball in Venezuela, Mexico, and and Puerto Rico. And then in between all of that, I was mm-hmm. in the Marines, you know, which wow. which for six years from '69 to '75. So I've been in almost every environment that there is to be in and I try wow. not to lose track uh, uh, and perspective of, of, of whoever else might be might have been or might be in that environment in order to in order to deal with them so if they want to call me a players manager that's 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 fine but I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a manager of life you know and uh-huh. I care about my players like you know like some of the managers that I had uh, you know, coming up, uh, the best managers that I played for were the guys that, you know, they cared for me, uh, along the way I've had like great teachers like Bill Lucas, Hank Aaron with the Braves. And I got to the Dodgers. I had Preston Gomez and, and Tom Lasorda and, uh, uh, you know, Jim Gilliam. And, uh, mm-hmm. so, uh, and, and then when I started coaching, I had Al Adels who, who I met at 16 years old. Oh, at wow. the Squaw Valley Warriors basketball camp that I could call upon, or I'd go over to Bill Walsh's house, you know, who I met when he was at the Black uh, uh, Coaches uh, uh, Caucus in the probably the late 80s, you mm-hmm. know, where I met Lubby Smith. And I met, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, – I was the only baseball player there, but they had a bunch of minority managers there, and he took a liking to me. And uh, he's, um, you know, one of my – main mentors that, you know, really told me on how to, you know, how to be. I'm going to show you something here. One of my prized possessions. I know you can't, I don't know if you can see it or not, but on my desk here, one of my prized possessions is a, a plate at the last supper by, you know, oh, wow. it was, yeah, it was Joe Montana. I mean, this is Bill's last, last, uh, uh, luncheon before he died, you know, Joe oh, Montana, wow. uh, Eric Wright, uh, uh, Dwight Clark, Bill Ring, and his secretary, and there's Bill, his administrative assistant, and there's Bill down there. And so wow. a- anytime I would have a problem, you know, I could call, I could call Bill. And Bill, um, I remember one day I was having problems with a, with a player, and um, I couldn't get through to him. And I mm-hmm. called Bill, and he told me, he goes, um, he goes, maybe that player might, it's like being a teacher. 
You know, I mean, he told me that player might be satisfied of getting a B in my class versus getting an A. And I knew, <laughs> and I knew what that was like because I tried to get Bs <laughs> to satisfy my mama. You know what I mean? And so, like I said, I, I saw a whole lot more potential in that person, but but that person, uh, you know, might not have wanted to be an A student and uh, mm -hmm. had to accept the fact that, and it was hard to do as a manager or a teacher or a parent or a coach. Uh, that 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 person might have wanted to be a B student instead of an A. All right, it's time for the lightning round, which is what I call tell the truth. But I already <laughs> know you're going to tell the truth. <laughs> so, uh, the best player you ever played with, Hank Aaron. All right, best player you ever managed, Barry Bonds. All right. Weirdest superstition you've ever seen? Well, probably Rico Cardi, probably, because he always had his he had his money and his jewelry and everything in his back pocket. And then <laughs> during the game? Yeah. And sometimes he wouldn't <laughs> slide because he didn't want to slide on his wallet or, or his jewelry. <laughs> and so we'd be running to the outfield. It sounded like Santa Claus is coming and all that jingling. And I was like, where that jingling coming from? You know what I mean? So <laughs> he didn't put his money in the jewelry box. He didn't put it in the in the in the uh, valuable box uh, bag. He kept it in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> you've you've been able to accomplish so much in your lifetime. How important will it be for you to become the first African-American manager to be inducted into Baseball's Hall of Fame? Well, you know, it, it'll mean a lot, you know, if it happens. Uh, I'm not putting my hopes up uh, in it. Uh, but uh, I remember talking to Sadahata O years ago. And Sadahata O, uh, uh, he was with the Tokyo Giants. I was with the Dodgers. And I asked him, I said, man, you're like nine-time MVP. You know, what keeps you motivated? And he said that, you can't worry about any accolades. You can't worry about what's going to happen at the end of your career. You can only worry about what you can control today. And mm -hmm. then when you get through playing, then you can look back and, and mean something. And, and I mean, let's face it. It's, uh, it's really in the long run, it, it, it means a lot to that person, but it's meaningless in the overall scale of, of life, I think. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, when I look back, like on my wall in there, I got, I got some bad dudes in my, in my, in my uh, wall in there. I got McCovey. I got a uh, 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 Satchel Page. I have, uh, you know, Larry Doby. I got one of the greatest guys uh, uh, that ever walked the earth, and 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 Willie Stargell. Wow. And and you never really hear Willie Stargell's name. Yeah, and uh, wow. so uh, that just let me know that you know, in the overall scale of life and in the world, this this is uh, really kind of meaningless. All right, and final one for you: your son Darren is a collegiate baseball player right now. Your honest opinion: does he have a shot yeah. at being just as good or better than his old man when he decides to turn pro? I think. Yeah, I think. I think better because, you know, he's not uh, uh, um, uh, like like uh, impressed by the lights. He's not impressed by being around people because, I mean, this he grew up in the ballpark. And, yeah. plus, and plus, I told him, he's probably more disciplined than, you know, than I was. I was a little wilder than him. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, 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 you know, he is really, really disciplined. Plus, I think what he has going for him is that he always wanted to be a baseball player. Mm -hmm. See, I always wanted to be a basketball player. I didn't even want to sign baseball, uh, but my wow. parents got divorced. I'm oldest of five. The economic folks of the wheel were off, and that's why I signed, you know, pro baseball. And I didn't fall in love with baseball until my first year with the Dodgers. I was playing basketball in the offseason, and I hurt my knee playing basketball against Jerry Manuel and his brothers. And it was almost mm -hmm. taken away from me. And oh, then okay. and only then did I fall in love with baseball. Well, this guy, this kid, he fell in love with baseball from, from you know, I didn't force him. You know, he was just uh -huh. around it and I presented it to him. So, you know, I think his love of baseball, his discipline, uh, you know, his work habits. I worked hard, but, you know, mm -hmm. I always had a little more fun probably than he had.
<laughs> and that's where we'll leave it. Dusty, I appreciate you joining Untold Truths with Telly. And good luck this season whenever it starts. Oh yeah, I will. I'm confident that, that I'm confident <laughs> that will start because baseball uh, is needed in this country, and uh, you know we need it. The owners need it, and uh, I think we all need it. Just we just have to be safe in the meantime. All right. Well, take care of yourself, Dusty. I really appreciate it, man. All right, Telly. I'll see you later. All right. Hey, man. All right, I'm gonna try to get that voice in my next life. Okay. <laughs> 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 I need to get it monetized in this lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, man. I'm pulling for you. <laughs> All, All right. right. I appreciate it, Doug. <laughs>